Hello, thanks for tuning in. This is Dave Herman, alias Daz the Artist, and I'm trying to move this off screen. There we go. So, I'm not sure how this is going to work, but something is very weird with Movavi. <clears throat> I'm going to try a few things before we see what we can create today. All right. So, this is, in brief, the current piece I've been working off and on for a long time. It's a entity that I say in my story is created as um, an achievement by a type 3 civilization. And this thing survived past the type 3 civilization's existence. It's humongous. It's out there in the all, and it manipulates in and out of and contains and is connected to all the multiverse layers. It is in its own Dyson sphere gyroscopic thing, and all of creation that we know might be just contained inside its tiny toe, for instance. Right now it's projecting something from one of the lights of its robotic, organic, life form, whatever it is, created by a type 3 civilization. I tried to make something that would be so out of our, you know, our common day thinking. And you can see like the leg is looking almost glass-like and the foot is robotic and then there's these beautiful things happening inside the leg and the animal's head and so on. Whatever this uh, creation imagines, hummingbirds and faces of, uh, you know, you would see in Japanese masks and uh, all kinds of stuff. Besides the uh, different organic structures and forms and turnings and transparencies and this pole in the middle and the, uh, a spiral coming off it going in and out of its arm and, and just all kinds of things. This is the early stages still, even though I've put hours and hours and hours into this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that, just where it's at, and then I'm going to, uh, what I hope to do, is to do something with the background. So if you look at my page, you'll be able to see the different ways I created these masks. So first let's take the face, for instance. I just want to show you some things, because I'm going to manipulate this background today. So if I turn off this one, what happens is you get to see these serpents in their creative stage on the right hand side but not the left the, the, the top two are not in creation so if I put that back on you can see the different stage and if I turn off this other box below it watch the face this is the original face and then I pushed and pulled and manipulated it uh, in affinity photo. And now I'm so getting a little more comfortable working between Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. I'm going to turn this back on and watch the face change. Isn't that cool? Let's do that a couple times. It's almost like it's like a movie in itself. It just kind of goes Boop. Yeah. So you can see one eye in the helmet even starting. Alright. Let me uh, pan back. So I go up to the top and I'm going to go view um, zoom to fit. And we're going to find the background. The background is going to be all the way at the bottom here. As you can see, I'm going to move this slider just so you can see all these layers. It's crazy. And we're going to turn off the background for a second. See, now I have my gray shape background in case I wanted to get into that. And I can turn that off. And then we get to the paper. Pretty cool. So, when you turn that off, if you add a layer above it, now this is the theory, I should be able to put another layer in there. Say I wanted to do something with sky. So first we're just going to fill with the color and test this out. So I'm going to fill with some kind of a medium rich blue there. Let's just tap it. And 
Let's see, edit. No, oh, it's a big tab, so there we go. So the file itself is 36 by 36 inches. And the stuff in the middle, uh, the figure from his head to his butt there, why he's bent, just the vertical part of him, like the top of his head to the bottom of the butt, you know, those feathers and everything, that would be about 8 inches. So we're going to prove that. I'm going to bling this up. And the rulers, let's find the rulers. So let me see. Uh, I don't know if you can find the rulers in a affinity photo. So we're going to check. We're going to see select. Should be a studio. Let's see, layers. Uh, let me just fit any photo if it doesn't. I mean, the ruler is always on in my designer. And you should be able to do show rulers. There we go. It's under view. Okay, so now you see the rulers. And that makes sense. It should be like their other software. And so if I drag that over, I'm just holding, I hold the shift key like any uh, digital program. And then you can you know, move it around with your pen. And if I bring that over near the ruler, say up in the corner, you can see the numbers that it goes by. So that would be, uh, let me get my glasses on because those are kind of tiny for me. It looks like it's going from about almost uh, the nine and a half mark down to the 14 mark. So it looks like it's roughly four and a half inches tall, his head. And then if you go down to the butt, you've got 18 to 10. So like I said, he's roughly 8 inches tall. Okay. And that's really cool to keep in mind uh, when working. Because the mind-boggling thing about my work, which is totally nuts, is if you take the tiniest cobra to scale, it's an inch. And... I will turn off that buzzer in a minute. That means my rice is done. And if I go uh, view actual, there it is at scale. So if you, if this, when it's finished, eventually is printed as a print and brought out, this would be actual scale. That would be in the middle of a 36 by 36 inch print. I'm going to work on this a long time. I want it to be a beautiful little masterpiece, and I'm probably going to buy it for myself and, and hang it on the wall if I can do that. We'll see what my funds permit and everything in time and so on. But there we go. And now I'm going to pause this for just a second, take my stuff off the stove, and I shall be right back. Let me just uh, do that. Pause. Hello, back from my break, I uh, made myself some delicious rice and beans. I had pre-cooked bacon, put it in there in the morning, all crispy, and then I crushed that up and put little teeny pieces into my rice and beans along with some uh, baby mushroom criminies and uh, like baby bellas sliced up in chunks and then uh, spices. And man, it was good. Had on a little rice uh, shell. Excellent. Okay, so uh, back to where we were. We were talking about scale, and you saw me bring up the rulers. So now what I'm going to do is work on this background. And the reason these two images have boxes around them are two reasons. I created it as a separate file to control, and I blocked out smudges and stuff on different layers. And then I wanted to be able to uh remind myself to paint in this area like they were manipulated digital constructs and maybe a cube of glass over it or something. I don't know. But it was something for me to be separate from the background. And so we're going to do that. Or I'm going to do that. You're going to watch. <laughs> so we have the blue background now. So let's go to uh, View Fit on Screen. Just bear with me. There we go. Zoom to fit. Naga. Okay, so we have this nice, clear. So I'm going to call this something now for change. 
I have so many layers that don't have names. So if I do that, and then I go to keyboard, I can type up the blue sky background. And looking to my right, does that look pretty decent? My spelling usually is terrible. Okay, enter. And then I can X that off. All right. So now I've created this and I know it's there. So I can airbrush this whole thing because I like to draw and put my own cosmos in there and I'm going to do that. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some kind of a cool, and this would be in the darkness of space, so it would actually be like almost black. You know what I mean? It would just be out there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one second while I'm talking to you and bring up a reference on another screen on the internet. Let me just pull up some cosmic skies. And that should be easy enough to do. Open a browser. Cosmic heavens. Let's see what that does. And then hit images. Yeah, lots of cool visions of artists and actual imagery and so on. And so do I want it to be a glow in the middle? Do I want it to be dark? I'm leaning more towards dark. And I'm leaning more towards... Um, it's somewhere near a star system. So I'm going to put like Hubble telescope images. Let me try that. There we go. And in the dark of space, find something swirly and cool and infinite, tangled. Give me some ideas. Yeah, there's so many clusters that uh, it's mind-blowing. Now, you understand that when you look in outer space, it's not really how it looks, but if we use infrared or ultraviolet, which is most likely how another civilization's eyes are going to work, they will see those layers of dust that we don't see at all. We just see black and stars. But they would see all those different shades and chromas of color, you know. So, okay, first thing I'm going to do is go to a nice airbrush. So I'm going to go to my brushes. And I'm going to go down the list here, seeing it says acrylics, dye, engravings, gouaches. This is kind of an extended set uh, from Affinity Designer. Once you get it, you get you can download some free stuff, you know, and I did that. We built this nice brush set, which I'm sure over time will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but oh, come on now. Oh, I see. I don't want to. I want to see my whole set there. And I want to. Uh, textures would be interesting. So let me see that. And I'm going to start with just swatches of color <clears throat> that are textured and they're not just like a smooth, but they have a little bit of a bump. So let's try this one. That comes up as, let's see, when I hit brush, it's 100% opacity, 32% flow, 80% hardness. If I do the one below it, opacity is the same, a little more flow, less hardness. So the 100% opacity, I'm going to modify that. <coughs> I like the textures, so I'm looking for something that's, let's try this one for starters, and I'm going to select, uh, let's start in the upper left, and we'll use a deep shade of blue here, so let's see how this works, we're going to go to color, 
and I'm going to go to a rich blue. So we get to this triangle, the outer edge, and I'm going to turn that until I find rich blue. There's kind of a rich blue. I'm going to open that up and move this over here. So when I look at that square, I want a really rich blue that's not pure blue. I want some depth for space, some black in it, right? So I click this, and that tells me CMYK values to the right in the lower right-hand corner. I like that. I'm going to close this. And we're going to do this, just paint right into the picture. Knowing this is the background, I'm going to let that take a second and process to see what we get. Kind of brush shapes and stuff. So it lays down kind of ridges. See, I don't want those ridges. Some kind of a square pattern in there. But <clears throat> it's not freaking me out. So I can I can I can change that brush. Let's try this brush. We're gonna try in a different area. We're going to undo that brush, edit, undo. And then we're going to, that's why I work on layers so we're non-destructive. And we're going to try another, there we go. Let's see how that populates. So that's beautiful. <clears throat> and because I'm going to mix colors, I don't want it to cover solid like I was painting the floor or the wall. You know, I want it to be like this, rich. I'm going to go right over my art because really this isn't behind this is behind my art. I want you to see that the benefit of a layer. And you can look at your foreground at the same time. I know it took us a while to get here tonight, but it's worth it if you're paying attention, I think. Okay? So now I got to save this just because the amount of processing is crazy. And I'm working off my laptop, which has been reasonably customized by me, but it can't go any further than what I've done. So I'm just going right over my art because really I'm going behind it. And let's see what we get. And I kept those parts of the art separate, see? from it, the head and, and, the, and the cobras, the nagas, as I call them. You know, they're like the Hindu god Shiva appearing as nagas or so many different mythologies on the earth with the naga. I mean, almost every culture has serpent gods. But we'll go with uh, India's for now because the nine seems to be important. And we're going to continue to do a fill. We're not making the brush too big. The brush and scale to the rulers is pretty big. It's three inches across. <laughs> okay, and we're starting to create our sky. Now, if you had to do this by dots, you'd be doing this literally the rest of your life. And this is 36 by 36 inches as a file. Now, see how nice that fits in there? And I haven't made the machinery yet or... How I'm going to create this, what I'm going to do with the globe, and what's coming in and out and stuff. But uh, this is the start. Now, that's looking very nice. I'm going to make it a little more dense, and then I'm going to introduce some colors. So I'm just going to kind of weave in and out. I don't want a pattern, but I'm going to richen it up right there. Let that populate, and then we're going to do a save. But I love being able to watch actually that populate, you know. Now, it would be cool if I had a really great, like, $10,000 tower that uh, did this in real time and had the super best graphics card in the world. But I don't, and so I've learned to appreciate the effect of it just doing its thing. 
And that's very, very cool. Okay, so we're going to do a save. That bar should come up again across my screen, saving document, because it is a giant, giant uh, set of memory going on there. We're working at 36 by 36 inches. If you look at the rulers, which I'm sure you can see, you can see on the far right it says 36, on the left at the top it says 0. And that's on the horizontal bar, and the vertical bar, same thing, 0 to 36. If I moved it up in a corner, um, like so, you could tell right there it's 0 to 36, 0 to 36. See? But when you move it over like that, it's giving you um, just, you know, expanding the ruler. Goes the opposite way in negative numbers and so on. Who knows why they do these things. All right. Now, we're going to add to the background. So if I'm going to have a dark swash, even darker than this. But I'm going to start with some... Uh, Let's see, color. I'm going to go into purple and find me a rich purple. Right between purple and blue. Right there. I will double click that square. Oops. I will drag our color chooser over. And I'm going to go where you see the arrow and hit that. And that's my color. And that tells me it's almost 100, 100 red and cyan, and more yellow and black. Okay, so I'm good with that. And I'm going to start in the lower left corner. And just kind of randomly jog along and bring that up behind my entity. Now you're watching that populate. And again, you can always change the scale of your marks and black holes and stuff by uh, changing the size of your brush, right? So let's just make the brush smaller, and we would have a dense nest of stuff, see? So I could do that in the lower right corner. See how dense that gets? This is actually an incredible brush. And this brush is free if you own Affinity photo. I mean, these programs, the Affinity Suite, each one of Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher, they're 50 bucks each. Well worth the power you are getting. I mean, this is just insane power. Really fantastic tool set. Excellent videos on Serif's own forum. <laughs> and you can, you know, with people like me that occasionally post stuff and other people that do much more professional videos, you can find and learn just about anything. But, uh, I mean, we're into the cosmos now, man. And that's my, my dark is looking good. And so I'm going to have some dark area maybe in the lower right, just a little. And uh, there you go. I don't want it to look contrived, so I'm going to have uh, some dark behind the machine up here in the upper left. I want that mess to fill in and drag down the side. And then uh, you look closely and you see, okay, so maybe these the brush creates these hard edges that are just like this square. You see that edge next to the top? Let's just draw over that a little. And you want to study these things to make sure you don't get those hard lines, because, of course, nowhere in the sky would be a straight line, I hope. If there was, <laughs> panic should be in your brain, because the simulation would be obvious that there is a glitch in it. All right, let's go into some kind of a orange. So we're going to get into this reddish orange. I'm going to pick that here. I'm going to click this box, this dot to bring out my 
color chooser. And I'm thinking for a rich shade in the sky. I like the deeper shades for what I'm doing right now. Then we can always bring out highlights. But let's uh, let's do that. And again, look at your CMYKs and know your balance between cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Because I started out in the printing profession, I understand those things. And uh, we used to have to do this by hand before they had computers. The uh, can't even begin to tell you how complex this was to build by hand on light tables. We had ways. And we would make a stipple brush, and we would uh, <laughs> scratch away film and, and do all kinds of stuff. It's just complicated. Infinitely complicated. And each craftsman back then, which was called a layout stripper, who worked on a light table and a printing company, they were layout strippers, they called us. Um, we had our, once we all went through our apprenticeships and were trained in the basics, which is how to actually, you know, create something uh, exactly to the needs of the client and produce it. And then that gets plates burned from it and it went to a printing press. Every artist, which a layout stripper was a, a skilled person, and I even taught this, um, developed their own neat tricks. You know, they'd say, oh, I say, I wonder how I could do this or I could do that. You would have wire brushes. You'd have uh, uh, magnifying glasses and loops and things. And you'd look inside every letter in a, in a job. If you were doing a 700-page book with 600 words on a page, you looked inside every single letter. And if there was a speck, of black dust on that film. You scrape that off with a little teeny razor blade knife. So, and that was just one of the infinite tasks you had to do. So now we've got this going, and you're watching me. I'm gonna say this, I've got a lot of stuff going on. Thanks for reminding me. And now, just for the fun of it, wait till this uh, saves. I'm gonna turn this bubby off, this, this thing off. Everyone has their own methods. I'm just showing you mine. Because if I wanted stuff to go through the ring, like, uh, say I wanted to treat the ring, the outer edge, to uh, conform with Einstein's theories of how light gets bent around the space-time gravitational distortion of space around an object, and then it be, it's called the lensing effect. So you see, like, uh, if you're looking at a galaxy far away, as the light hits this object, it gets distorted uh, around the edge, but as it comes back around the other side, it turns back into that image. And I could do that but I don't know if I'll do any gravitational lensing, okay? So now, this is looking pretty sweet, and this brush, I have to say, it's just like perfect, right? Okay, so now we're gonna get some kind of a, uh, like a greenish color. And a greenish, where's my little knob up here? It's still processing, I think, or something's going on. Could be. Could be it's lost its mind. And we're SOL, so let's see a second. That was a lot of information I should have. Okay, we're good there. Let's do a save again. Sometimes it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now let's move that light around. Okay, we're back. And if you work in this software or other softwares like Photoshop or any of the other things, Clip Paint Studio or something, you'll figure out ways to do things. I find this program the least glitchy of every program I've ever worked in in graphics. Now, I'm not a master, but I highly recommend 
affinity designer and they don't uh, pay me to, they don't even know I exist they don't pay me for endorsements or anything like that I just like the program you know I self-taught I learned off their videos I learned offline and then I knew how to I learned how to make better questions but really if you go to their serif forum uh, website and then go I mean serif uh, yes dot com and you go into the tutorials there's you know divided up by software so you look under affinity um, designer you look under affinity photo or you look under affinity publisher and I intend to learn all three but right now I'm most efficient in designer and I'm now becoming proficient or acclimated to uh, photo and now I'm going to start to work and you guys can watch me work as I start to build this image because I I need to think a little more as I start to build this, and I don't always want to uh, be making up a conversation, but I want to let you watch my experimentation. See, I'm drawing right over my gyroscope and uh, creating the dense fields, and it's a slow build. You know, you can have just the wispiest like lines, see, like that. Isn't that elegant? And I can change the color <clears throat> to bring it closer or further away, you know. Obviously, dark colors recede, light colors come forward, and cool colors recede, and hot colors come forward. But if you're looking at an image for reference, it kind of will always give you that guideline mentally. If you've drawn enough, you kind of get the idea. So, and then I slow down my hand as I bring it through. I'm drawing right over every image. And yet you see how that looks totally behind it. Because that's how that layer works. And I can jog and change. I'm changing my brush with my left hand on my Express Key Remote. That is something that's part of the Wacom tablet. Uh, you, it's another device that plugs into one of the four USB ports. Uh, the Wacom 24-inch that I use, let me say this, has four USBs and um, a headphone jack. I'm not a guy that really works with headphones a lot because... When I work, I'm looking out my front window, and outside my front window, there could be somebody who wants to come up to the shop and needs a tattoo, and I would turn this off and go to work or whatever. Uh, but it does have the jack. I've used it. It's kind of neat if you're watching a video and you put your headphone jack and kick your feet up on your desk and all that good stuff. Kind of fun. And uh, away you go. So, let's turn the light on. Now, let's make sure we save this. I'm just going to do a save as and repeat. So, I'll show you how to do that, right? Save as. So, you see my, it's called Gyroscope Test Affinity Photo. There's millions of files. <laughs> oh, my God. I was so lost. You know, this is the monster main, the main one. Every now and then, you got to just clone it because... Sometimes you're drawing, you don't realize your brush has hit a layer, dragged it off a quarter of a millionth of an inch or something, leaves a white gap somewhere, like you see on the edge here. So I'm going to show you how to fix that, first of all. Let's, uh, let's go to the arrow, and the arrow is the, uh, up here in the upper left under the hand, right? And that's the move tool. And when I click that, because I'm on this layer, you see it, it to find the perimeter of the layer. So if I take and move those corners just a skosh out, just a skosh, you know, it's moving the entire artwork around. 
This is like nuts. If you were painting, you couldn't do this. Like, let's say you, you're painting and you said, you know, I wish I could move the whole freaking thing to the left a quarter of an inch. Well, you can't, but you certainly can in cyberspace. This kind of power, just for a person who grew up when they had no computers, I'm an old guy, and, and I've done like four or five different skilled jobs and stuff over the years, watching the evolution of all this, this kind of power just blows my mind. And every day I work in it, I appreciate it more and more because it wasn't something I grew up with. And it allows me. Let's just turn this off, right? Let's have some fun. Bonk. It doesn't exist, right? Oh, wait, it does exist. <laughs> Let's turn this layer on. Oh, Let's turn that off. Let's turn this one off. It's underneath it. So that's the fun. Each layer is like a piece of glass. That's how I think of it. And now we're going to move those in just a nudge, just a little. Uh, yeah, do another save. Just a button like that and move that up just a touch. Okay, let's save, file, save. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to um, sizing. We're going to get off that arrow. Let's take a look. Yeah, we'll see the boundary looks good. So just for a minute, we're going to bring this up to scale by going to file and zoom and zoom actual size. Okay. If you also went view zoom 100% then it does this if you go back to view zoom actual you're there okay so this is actual output size now we're just going to travel around just for a minute so I'm holding my shift key and that changes the tip of where my digital pen meets the brush meets the screen to a hand so if you look at that, from 0 to 17 is exposed on the screen now. So this is just about half size in one clip. And I can go like this and check for errors. Because I, you can see uh, all these tubes and stuff. Well, those can still be manipulated by me. I've created something as my go-to to just have it there but I can add reflections I can I'm gonna do all kinds of stuff because what started out as a late night sketch uh, my mind went running with it and lo and behold it's getting into this very 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 cool artwork that's just over the top and uh, you know I don't say to myself okay next drawing I'm gonna do this what I do say is well I want to know how to do that in this drawing, so I'm going to look that up, I'm going to study it, and I'm going to do it. Until I reach the point where I think my drawing is done, I just keep teaching myself all the new things I need to know to create what I'm trying to create. Now that looks super badass. And I, you can see where I've done some multiverse effects of transparencies and stuff like, look where that swirl goes around the pole, goes into his arm, but also can be seen through the glass leg. And uh, these are all uh, tools I've added to my kit bag over time. Now, if I hit the, the magnifying glass and just scroll this way or that way, I can look into the detail. Now, I've got, uh, this is a 4K monitor, but due to the graphics card in my laptop, I can go to 2K resolution. However, at 2K, this is, this is more than your brain can handle anyways. The elegance of this monitor, the elegance of the Wacom tool, you know, the Wacom 24-inch monitor, as we look at this, 
and the software by Affinity Design, for me, is my perfect match. And I've been really just putting in the hours to, to skill myself in this. But I've got to say, this is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to make sure I have a save. Uh, it's saved, but I'm going to save as, just to double save again. Tell me I have it, and I'll say yes. If you look in the lower right, there's your navigation in the uh, sidebar. And you can do all kinds of stuff with this, and rotate the angles. And, uh, like everything, you can do all kinds of things. So we're in, a, in, a, in the photo program, and I can actually light up different areas. I've been experimenting with lighting. Uh, the controls are way better than Photoshop, 100% better. And I will do a video once I get enough of this done where I'm going to shed light on specific areas from specific locations, like maybe from his chest. <coughs> Pardon me. I could have light going on the pole or something. But you'll see. So now that we've got that going, let's go back to our full illustration, which we would view at zoom to fit. And then that's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to draw some more in there. And um, let's study this for a minute. I'm going to put some yellow. Let's get to the yellow. And we, we so when you you know use your color wheel on the outside when you get to the color you want, you can double click the little ball. It brings up your color chooser, and then you can look at this box, which of course is from the lower left, you know, all the way across the bottom, you have your dark black going up to zero at the top in increments. And from the far right, you have your yellow going diagonally from solid yellow to zero across. And then you get... Uh, all these combinations of CMYK in the yellow range. So, like, if you put your mouse there and click it, I'm using my digital pen, you see the CMYK change. Of course, you have your RGB, you have your hexadecimal numbers, that those, like, six-digit numbers, you have the HSL. You know, it depends on what kind of person you are. I'm a CMYK guy. And if I'm doing something in my... Uh, printed circuit boards, I go by hexadecimal numbers, but I haven't worked all that out with Affinity Designer. For that, I've been working in Photoshop. I will, in the future, do it on here. But there's just too much stuff for one guy to learn right now. Okay, so I'm going to pick this brighter shade. So you see where it says CMYK, yellow is at 100. There's no black. There's no red. There's a touch of cyan. So that makes it more on the green side. You know, yellow and blue make green. If I wanted orange, then I could change that uh, CM, C to a zero and, add, and to the red, switch 12 and zero around, and I'd have a, a, an orange yellow. So something to remember in mixing colors would be the same thing you recall when you mix them traditionally in the real world. If you're making yellow and the primary colors being yellow, red, and blue, you probably know this, but I'm just throwing it in case somebody who doesn't know this is watching. You have your yellow, red, and blue are primary colors, meaning there's no way to mix those. They come out of uh, colors in the world that exist solid in those colors and get crushed and changed in paint. So if you want a nice orange and you're mixing yellow and red to make orange, you start with a yellow, like a cadmium yellow, that has red in it. Then it doesn't make a polluted color. If you used a yellow that had blue in it, now you're really mixing three colors. You're mixing yellow, blue, and red. So it's a dirtier orange. And you might like that color for an effect. But remember, if you want a pure, like, 
orange, green, and purple, which are your secondary colors made by mixing the primaries. Yellow and blue makes a nice green if the yellow has blue in it. Yellow and red make a nice orange if the yellow has red in it. Blue and red make a nice purple if the red has some blue in it. So there you go. All right, so this is the color I'm selecting. I hit close. And I'm going to have some of that behind in the center and see just if we like that. So let me go back to brush. Make sure I'm on the layer. You don't want to be on a different layer. I've, I've forgotten that, and I, you know, I'm talking. And uh, let's see how that looks coming through there. That's interesting. Okay, so we'll do a save. If you save frequently like this, then it doesn't bog down your system or crash it. And we do a little more of that yellow. Dense, dense puffs. So I can do that. You see how that's coming at me? And then feather it in like that. And maybe connect that. And then streak it. And streak it that way. Puff a little bit on here. Just so that it looks cool. So I'm going to do a save. And I'm going to do a pause. I'll be right back. And which will seem like nothing. Let me uh, drag my reference from the laptop to the second monitor. I have a, a, a Polaroid monitor I use for the last, you know, 10 years besides this monitor. And then I'll go over to my... Uh, recording software and I'm going to hit pause for a second. Okay, so we continue. And this is also developing all my skills with regards to starting and stopping the video stuff, working on the art, and so on. <clears throat> now, let's push some areas black back using black, which there is in space. So we're going to go to the black uh, yeah, there's no area on the outside of your wheel like that. So when you want a rich black, you're thinking, do I want purple in my black? Do I want red in my black? What do I want in my black? Rich black means, in printing terms, uh, a black that isn't 100% black by itself. It gets a richer look of a color if you have colors mixed into it. So this is going to be purple, but it will be red and black. So if we double click this dot, and we bring this box over here for your viewing pleasure, and we move the uh, artwork over this way, you can see in the CMYK that there's almost 90% of cyan, which is your blue, 95% of your red, 44% yellow, and that much black at the bottom, 56 so let's you see how that is like a tinge of purplish so let's uh, I'm going to darken an area down in the lower left and I'm going to push it back even further See how it does that? We're going to go into that hole and bring that out from the hole a little bit. It's still a rich black. It's not going to... It doesn't look like it's cut out in essence. you got different holes inside the hole. So if I want to, you know, stretch it a little, say, um, you know, the nebula is here or something up into this, I could do that. I can have a dark area below. Now, if I want to go richer and darker, I go to the right where it's adding in more blue. The numbers change in the CMYK era. 
every other area too, but CMYK is since you want to follow your cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for when it prints, you would have an idea about that. So now we're going to even go darker to push away from the viewer. See that? Create that hole. And if I wanted in the, the hole to the left, if I reduce my brush way down, I can actually put a pocket in there somewhere. Dark black. See, I could do that. And I could, you know, do it in the center, let's say. But then if I didn't want that to be like a hard edge, I could go around the ring of that. And so you get these darker spaces further away, like I just did on the side. Okay. And if I didn't like that, I could I could destroy it. But say I want the, a corner to have the dark into it. I could do that. That makes an interesting corner, even. And then if I wanted this to have a, a richer, redder tinge, I could go to the outer ring. And I could mingle some red into my sky, not pressing hard with this, and start to make the structures that you see. A little more emphatically before we get to the white stars you know you can have those haystacks like you even see in the nebulas you could do all kinds of things but you don't want to so if I get richer now richer reds and I just sweep straight up and diminish my brush this is what we get and then I can drag across from the right into the yellow. Did you see that coming across diagonally from right to left? I can make a profusely dense area to the left of the gyroscope. And then I can bring that out with some uh, teal or like a, you know, a green. You kind of leave your color chooser there and you can kind of just play. So see how that grows. Because this would be the dust cloud. Now, see, that's kind of where you want it. I, I, I'm going to put more stuff in there. But, yeah, in fact, let's just do some more real teal, uh, wispy stuff in here. And to do that, uh, I'm going to pick an area. Like, say... Cross lower right outside the wheel and somewhat in the wheel. I'm going to just make a teal. See that? And I'm going to spread it around a little bit. Right there, it comes towards the viewer. And then just puff a little at the side. Like that. Now, if I want to put whiter into that, like stars, I'm going to make small little areas with the brush. To do that, you're looking in the lower right, and like that. <clears throat> I haven't made them real dense. So if I make one like that, and then I go around it, see like that, you get these clusters and can build up the depth of outer space very uniquely you can treat this like the veneer or an edge to something fabric uh, but think of it as you know astronomical layers in front of you really. so the coolest colors are coming forward the, the I mean, the hottest colors here, red, orange, and yellow. Sorry to think and draw and talk. The cool colors come forward, and the, the hot colors come forward. See, my brain's even turned around now. And cool colors recede. 
And then looking at those, if you wanted to enhance an area, you could think of this as like you're handling lace, a doily, a tablecloth, whatever you want, the edge of a plate, anything and define the border of a space quite neatly. Or you can just pop in some stuff here and there. Like we're doing it slowly building a nebula, a sky, a cosmic area, whatever you want to. Now I'm going to take a, just a little bit cross like that, the top. And you can go into a different brush, of course, which we have yet to do because we're experiencing this brush. And so far it's doing what I need it to do until I switch. But that's pretty cool. Let's save that. Quite elegant. Very rich. Now, just to show you, if I wanted to go in front of my gyroscope, you know, I would just create another layer. I would do that, but I'm not going to do that uh, thinking about the finish yet, because I want to create this layer. But let me just uh, show you how to do that. I would go all the way up to the top, and then I would hit my highest layer, and I would add a layer, and we're going to name this layer. And we're going to call it Sky in Front. Of Gyro. And that will save me some trouble. And now if I did some stars, I'm just going to show you because I'm going to cut this off in an hour and we're pretty close to an hour. So let's take uh, this color. Grab something there. So if I wanted that to come across on the blue side, like this, see that? Now it's in front of everything. And then I might add white. I might have it go around like that. You know, so this is how I'm going to build these layers up. It's going to be very, very nice. Okay, so now... I can save this. Watch. File save. Bar comes up. And I can turn that off. Uh, let it save. Because it's saving, it didn't want me to uh, stop it. So we'll give it a second. All right. Now I can turn it off. And if I turn it off, nothing is in front of the gyroscope. You see that? So let's zoom in for a second before I end this video. Right to where I added that with a layer. Let's close this. And we'll turn that layer back on. You see all the stars and stuff that are now going across? So if you want to build non-destructive things, keep them all on layers. Save all your layers, you can come back, turn them off and on, do whatever you want. Let's view this at actual size, and then I will call this a video. So zoom to fit is there, and then I will do view zoom actual. And I will bring the central piece down for us to see. This is quite, quite exquisite. So everyone have a good evening, and thanks for tuning in and watching me meander.